How you doing? It's uh, Raw Merritt from 123network.net with part 3 of part 9 of the C panel tutorial. Um, now today we'll be going over the file section. As you've seen in my previous videos, I went over the mail section and the preferences section. Okay, so let's get started in the file section. Um, again, if you have any problems with anything, there's something I didn't mention, or something you still need help with, you can contact me at 123network.net, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, first we're going to go into the backup section. And if you'll click it, uh, backups basically allow you to download a full site backup, or either back up individual files uh, let's say for example one of your MySqual databases or your email accounts or email filters you'll come into this backup section as you can see here download a f or generate a full website backup that would be a complete site backup that means emails site information MySqual databases etc uh, pretty much everything uh, now if you want to do a partial backup, let's say uh, just on a database or just on an email or on an email filter or you wanted to restore uh, a, a MySQL account that had messed up, you can go ahead and restore it here by browsing it, uploading it off your computer and uh, it'll be restored. So that's pretty much backups. Backups is pretty much common sense. Uh, same thing with the backup wizard. The backup wizard explains step by step a little bit more into detail on uh, how to go ahead. Takes you through the step by step process into uh, downloading a full or partial backup or uploading a full or partial uh, restore to restore the cPanel and your files back to uh, when they were working properly. Okay, next we have the uh, file manager, and I'm going to go ahead and add the legacy file manager in with it. Uh, I myself use the file manager. The legacy file manager is just a different style of file manager. I'll click it right quick uh, just to show you. Uh, when you go in, it's pretty uh, simple. I believe it would be the uh, Hostin 24's file manager. I'm not sure. It could be another just basic file manager. Um, but I use the actual file manager. I stay clear of the legacy file manager as I don't find it works as well. Now if you go into your file manager you'll see you'll have all your files here located. If you wanted to set a permission you can click up here change permissions. Click your file hit the change permissions. Same if you wanted to edit here. Uh, you can do a code editor to edit your HTML, PHP or .CSS code. Um, as well as you can upload from your desktop, uh, make a new folder, new file. This is where basically you'll be taking care of your website, editing it, uploading, so on and so forth. Um, that's what your file manager is. All your work will be done out of your file manager or your FTP file transfer protocol. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, explain the web disk. Web disk gives you the ability to access your website from your local computer or from your desktop. Basically, it will give you the option to go ahead and set up a West, uh, web disk account. As you see here, I already have a web disk account. Um, you'll go to the step-by-step -step progress. It's very simple. And what it does is it allows you to pretty much set up a file manager on your desktop so you can go through your website files on your desktop rather than having to be into the file manager or legacy file manager okay um, now disk space usage disk space usage just basically shows the amount of disk space being used by the folders it won't show the amount of disk space being used for individual files but it will show the disk space being used for individual folders. As you can see, the public HTML is using 90.85 mags. So it's pretty simple too as well, right? Most of the stuff in the cPanel would be common sense, but for those of you who don't know, I'm giving you a quick run through everything. Now, FTP accounts. FTP accounts, like I said, if you don't know, it's a file transfer protocol account. 
if you do not want to use the uh, file manager and upload your files to your uh, directly to your domain through your uh, file manager you go ahead and download a file transfer protocol just a quick preview of what a file transfer protocol looks like here's one that I use FileZilla I recommend FileZilla as it's very easy to use quick um, get the update there uh, yeah so basically I'd recommend FileZilla everybody got their own file transfer protocol program that they use um, and like I said it's to upload uh, your files to your uh, domain uh, here if you went into your FTP accounts you can create a new one log in password password again here you can set the quota of your FTP account the amount of uh, 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 megabytes a person can upload um, as well as change the password and configure the uh, FTP client now uh, next we will be going into the FTP uh, session control basically you probably won't need this but just for you to say if you wanted to see uh, you had a few people have an FTP account set up on your uh, domain if somebody was logged into an FTP account you can come into the FTP session control see who's logged in and uh, here it will show you the user logged in logged in from logged in time so on and so forth. So basically just shows who's logged into your FTP account. Now last but not least would be anonymous FTP which means anyone uh, basically when you uh, enable this anyone can access your uh, FTP account without a username or a password. Uh, your anonymous directory is your public underscore FTP and basically this would be used for say if you're giving out free templates free downloads you'd be allowing people to access your FTP to download these files for free uh, other than that you're not going to want to use it as it is a security issue and uh, just considered unsafe unless you know what you're doing and you have things set up properly uh, that'll be all for the uh, file section uh, it's Robert Merritt from 123 Network and have a good day.